was hanging, was hanging, was hanging. Big salute, big salute to everybody. Okay. Yeah, just found out I got a, a, some family in Kenya. Well, I didn't know I had some family in Kenya, but now I know who they is. I need to holler at them, see what's going on. Um, yeah, connected with my African family, man. Big salute, big salute, Burkina Faso. Big salute, big salute, big salute, Nairobi, Kenya. Burkina Faso, Wagadougou, the city, the city, 226A, Burkina Bay, A. Mm, big salute. Big salute. Burkina, but they don't salute like this. I think they might do this sometime, but I know when they salute, they, mm, they let you know they salute. Everybody, oh, let me go salute too. See, make you go to salute. So big salute for King of Faso, man. Love y'all, man. I'll be back soon. I'll be back soon. Oh, let me close the door. Yeah, I don't be playing with no mosquitoes. They say mosquitoes, I ain't, I ain't that bad, but Burkina Faso gonna scar me with mosquitoes. Mosquitoes are my worst enemy right now. Mosquito, all love. Cause Burkina Faso got all love. But yeah. <clears throat> Big salute to my support squad, man. My support goons, man. I love y'all, man. I love y'all, man. I love y'all, man. Y'all know who y'all is. It's only, it ain't but a few of y'all. You know what I'm saying? You know, but uh, uh, Megan, mm. uh, uh, Orlando, mm. Big Bro Mob, mm. Shit, J Bird, mm. Shirley, mm. Mama, mm. Shit. It's a few more. It's a few more. I forget. Uh, uh, uh. Detroit Poly. Mm, mm. Detroit Poly. Uh, uh. Wet Plant Young Joy at YouTube. Wet Plant Young Joy. Mm. I think it, it stopped thugging on Instagram, right? Yeah, I think it's on Stop Thugging on Instagram. But Wet Plant. Mm. Madam Claire. Mm. Yeah, my support goons, man. It's a few more people I'm forgetting, but some people don't even want their name out there. And what's up, haters? Mm, what's up, haters? <laughs> I can't do nothing but laugh at y'all lames, man. Boy, y'all lames. Boy, y'all lame. Boy, them haters, boy. Whoa. Boy, they super lame. Boy, they lame. That's all I can say. You can just look at them. The boy said 60% not even subscribers. That even that either means you pay for views <laughs> and still ain't getting no subscribers. I'll, everybody see you lame. And your other homeboys too. All y'all. It's a little committee of. <laughs> it's a little committee of. Boy, that shit crazy. Well, y'all labels as fuck. But anyway, let's get into this reading, y'all. Let's get into it. We're going to pick up what we left off. Because I just wanted to get the uh, question and answers out the way. You know what I'm saying? So we can get to the juicy, juicy. Okay. But first, we must recover our memories and get out of our self-forgiveness. Okay, yep, that's what we left off. The students of the N-U-W-U-A-B-I-A-N nation that I've spoken with seem to say that there are other requirements for the 144,000. Now, this is somebody um, asking Black Roots a question. There are other requirements for the 144,000. Three of which is 
the ability to speak the Nuwuabic, N-U-W-U-A-B-I-C language. The ability to practice Wunuwubu, W-U-N-U-W-U-B-U, Wunuwubu. Wunuwubu? Wunuwubu. That's what it look like. Right knowledge, right wisdom, and right understanding, and the ability to teach the former two. Do you agree with them? This is Black Woman's response. Yes, I agree. The most important is the practice of Buana Buaba. B U O N A B. W A B A and Wu Wu Nu Wu Wu W U N U W U B U. It's the gateway to the rest. The second level of Black Root Science is precisely about that. By gaining control of our memories, we'll come in contact with our first ancestor. That's the key to understanding knowledge and wisdom. He slash she will teach us the ancient language. You already know the original language, but it's buried deep in your subconscious memories. After you complete the second level, you'll very likely feel a strong desire to teach others. That's how the number will increase quickly. Hmm. Yeah, I'm ready to learn that. I got to get my memories right. Would you consider yourself one... This is somebody asking him a question. Would you consider yourself one of the 144,000? I suspect you are. Black Roots. Only if you consider yourself one also. By myself, I'm only one. Together with the others, we'll teach will reach 144,000. Damn, hold on, let me read that again. Together with the others, we'll teach, we'll reach 144,000. Damn. Yeah, he said that smooth. He said that smooth as fuck. Okay, there's somebody else asking a question. I find it ironic that the white races plan to do battle with that deity Yaku, when he finally reveals himself to them and the world. How can the personalities of a mind hope to combat the entirety, E-N-T-I-R-E-T-Y, of that mind? It would be like me trying to fight and conquer my first self, vainly, foolishly, and hopelessly impossible. Black Roots response. True. <laughs> Somebody else asking a question. I want to ask you a question on the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Why do you say he succeeded in the mission far beyond his wildest dreams? Is the success of his mission linked to the mission of Malachi York and his New Wu New Nation N U W A B I A N Nation. I suspect it is because I'm sure there was for more to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad's task than establishing the Nation of Islam, which to all appearances presently looks like a def defunct and floundering organization. I smack him upside his head because he don't understand so it ain't his fault. This is Black Roots' response. Think of all the off think of all the offshoots that came out of his work. All the gods that build together today from the 
in, in nu, Nuwabians to the five percenters to all the rap artists and other ordinary people who know that the black man is God. All that is the result of his ministry and it's spreading all over the world where there are black people to be found. Yeah, there's a whole lot of offshoots. Yeah, a whole lot of offshoots. Okay, somebody asking a question. Also, are the remnants of the extraterrestrial creatures of the pale races, the insectoid, reptilian, mammalian, 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 aliens still existing outside of this planet, on other planets, star systems, etc. Or have they all been compelled back to the earth? What of the pale races themselves? Are they even capable of escaping the confines of this planet? Especially in this day of time. Black Roots response. They haven't all been compelled to the earth. All the extraterrestrials still live on their planets in different places in the galaxy. The ones that are here are astronauts, scientists, Geneticists, linguists, etc. They're sent by their people on a mission and they go back and forth between Earth and their homes. Damn, I'm gonna drop my phone. Okay, somebody asking a question. I would like to ask you your thoughts on the seeming on the seeming Messiah that was promised. Yahweh being Yahweh. I've only recently come into knowledge of Yahweh being Yahweh and his organization, so I don't know much about them as yet. But from what I am reading from their writings and their journey, they seem to be the one thing I've been searching for. Hebrew Israelites that have remembered and retaken their heritage and have done that are taking the important step of moving out from the place of their captivity to the place of redemption, which is their ancient homeland. Okay, this is Black Roots' response. Are you strong enough to join such a group as an independent mind and not a follower? If yes, then I would, then I would encourage you to indeed ally yourself with this or other Black His Hebrew Israelite organizations. You may get the opportunity to learn as well as gain and contribute to the atmosphere of black brotherhood that exists in some of them. There are several such organizations, as you probably know. One of the more serious ones called Black Hebrews already has members living permanently in the Dimona, D-I-M-O-N-A, Israel. This is only the beginning of the return of Yahweh's people back to the land of their ancestors. On the other hand, if you're not strong enough to resist the charisma of the leaders of some of the organizations, then you could find yourself trapped as a cult follower rather than a leader. We are now at the end of this 6,000 year cycle where the time for following is over. It is now the time for leading. 144,000 black people are needed now who will, take, who will take this leadership role and open the way for all black people to be free. Black people are not followers by nature as each one is an independent God in reality. These 144,000 will eventually open the way for the establishment of the new society or rather a return to the ancient eternal society where each God incarnates on earth not to follow but to create and each one uniquely. Oh. Okay, this is skeptic talking. I have seen satellite images of what appear to be impressive spaceships currently 
orbiting the sun. They seem to be doing something to the sun. Most likely, they are increasing his power to put the heat on the pale races on the surface of the earth, which is the reason why the pale races are currently shooting missiles into space, aiming at the sun or the Elohim themselves or both. Foolish creatures, to see this, go to this webpage, www. C Y B E R S P A C E O R B I T dot com. Okay, this is Black Roots response. As for the spaceships around the sun, the Elohim are involved in a process that will eventually result in the removal of oxygen from the earth. That's why they sell an oxygen. You may know that oxygen is necessary for combustion to take place. That means guns, bombs, even automobile engines. Internal combustion engines cannot function without oxygen. Neither can a fire be lit. That makes sense. When they complete this mission, all YT's weapons, guns, bombs, missiles, torpedoes, nukes, etc. will become useless as well as the rest of his technology, because it all depends on combustion of oxygen. They will substitute the oxygen with a form of ozone. There will be a new type of air for breathing made of this form of ozone. All this requires certain adjustments of the sun's magnetic field and it and its relation to the Earth's atmosphere. That's why Nubiru, so-called 12th planet, is now parked between the Earth and the Sun where it cannot be seen due to the Sun's glare. Ah. The primary reason for replacing the oxygen with a higher form is not to neutralize YT's weapons, the primary reason for replacing the oxygen with a, with a higher form is not to neutralize YT's weapons. That's just a side benefit. The real reason is because the new kinds of bodies that will survive on Earth, which will be similar to our ancient bodies, will need it for breathing. Oh, okay. Okay, there's somebody talking to Black Roots. Peace, brother. I have been reading your lesson online for the past three months, and I am very impressed. I am not the type of man to believe in any and everything I come across, but there are just some things you feel, and your knowledge is one of them. I applaud you. My question, I am what the world calls a homosexual, <laughs> and I have some serious concerns with my choices and how they fit into society. I truthfully don't have a problem with my sexuality being that I've been with both males and females, and I like both, but want a little more. I'm just trying to be frank. Please don't take this as disrespect. According to your knowledge, am I to be doomed forever, cut away from my people? Which is God correct? Why does it feel natural for me if everybody says it isn't? I love my people and I would rather be able to coexist at the highest form of love possible. But is that possible given my sexuality? If my sexuality is seen as going against nature and God, does that make me a devil? I sincerely hope not. I appreciate any response you can give me. I have searched so long for truth. <laughs> oh man This is Black Roots My brother We were all born in this 6,000 year cycle In order to overcome challenges All of us Choose a particular challenge Some more brave than others That would be ours To experience and defeat Some people The brave ones Incarnate into bodies Wrecked with per perilous 
paralysis, disease, blindness, etc. Others are born into situations that encourage them to become thieves, murderers, rapists, and so on. All of these are challenges meant to be overcome. That's the only way we can build our character in this age. In past ages, all black people went through the trials and rigors of initiation are no longer publicly available to black people. So they must perfect their character in other ways. Hence the challenges and hardships of life. The same is true of the challenge of homosexuality. Many people are either born with a genetic P-R-O-C-L-I-V-I-T-Y proclivity that makes them prone to succumb to homosexuality, while others, especially children, are forced into experiences and situations that turn their psyche towards homosexuality. Yeah, that's big facts. Both these methods of becoming homosexual, i.e. being genetically predisposed to, to it or being forced by the circumstances of your upbringing, both these ways can be overcome if one wills. If people can overcome the challenge of polio, physical disabilities, blindness, deafness, etc., and become productive members of society, who don't add to its decay? So too can one overcome the challenges of homosexuality. To embrace it as if it's a natural thing is to delude oneself. It's like giving in to one's tendency to commit murder, thievery, etc. However, that tendency came about However, that tendency came about. It's a sign of a weak character. In the case of male homosexuals, to overcome it does not mean you have to force yourself to sexually embrace a woman, not at all. Sex is not an absolute necessity for every member of society. Society will continue even when there are some individuals who don't procreate as long as they don't do the opposite, which is to encourage racially genocidal behavior. Yeah, that means stop promoting your, your affliction. You've been accepted, so stop promoting it. That's encouraging racially genocidal behavior. Yes, that's exactly what it's doing. So when a man feels no sexual attraction towards a woman, he can still lead a happy, loving life without engaging in sex. As a matter of fact, there are def definite spiritual benefits to conserving sexual energy. The challenge to you is whether you'll overcome the temptation to give in to reckless, unnatural sexual pleasures or whether you're morally strong enough to resist and thereby build a strong character. Yeah, I'm going on two years, no sex. I'm trying to build my character up. I'm trying to build my character up. Y'all tell me how I'm doing. Y'all tell me how I'm doing. You may ask, what's the point of building a strong character in this, moral in this mor morally corrupt world? Why should you give up your physical pleasure? The reason, brother, is because a moral character is your only key to true love, divine unity. Many homosexuals use the word love to refer to their relationships. This is not love. It's a self-deception necessary to justify their failure to raise up to the challenge and overcome the easy temptation of homosexuality. Just like in the case of rape, pedophilia, etc. It takes no effort whatsoever to give in to these temptations. They are the ultimate mark of irresponsibility. It takes more strength and courage to get up in the morning and go to work than it does to wait at a dark corner 
and raping the old lady. Oh, man. Similarly, it's a sign of moral weakness and irresponsibility to find other weak men and engage in indiv individually unhealthy and societal harmful acts. It's much more responsible to resist the temptation. Man, ooh, that's some real shit. It's a sign of moral weakness and irresponsible to find other weak men and encourage an individually unhealthy and societally harmful acts. S O C I E T A L L Y. Societally harmful acts. It's much more responsible. To resist the temptation. Man, that's deep. It's a question of whether or not you're up to the challenge. To face it courageously and overcome it. Or take the easy way and give in to it without a struggle. Mm, 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 mm. Well, so much of that going on in America. Man, it's crazy. They trying to rub it on the rest of the world. The LGBTD, all them, yeah, yeah, them, them folk. As to the question of whether you'll be doomed forever, no, it's impossible for any black person to be doomed. All the evil acts we engage in during this 6,000 year cycle were introduced to us by the light skinned races. They were unknown to us before then. We only came here to prove that God can overcome all challenges, whether it's the challenge of slavery or attempted. Genocide meant or attempted genocide meant to destroy us as a nation, or the challenge of homosexuality meant to morally bankrupt us as individuals. If you don't overcome your challenges here, you'll overcome them in Yahweh's heaven, but at a greater cost. This is not a punishment, but a choice because ultimately. You are one of the one billion, eight million gods, and no one can punish God. Peace, bro. Okay, this is somebody giving thanks. I appreciate you getting back to me and answering my questions in full. Perhaps it will take me a lifetime to consider the weight of my decisions in this world. Oh, he responded to the homosexual dude. Keep doing what you do, brother. And again, I appreciate the knowledge that you are spreading. I, for one, have benefited. Change your ways, brother. Okay. We gonna, I'm going to introduce you to level two, chapter 38. Introduction to level two. In the second level of Black Root Science, I intend to show people two things. How to get in touch with the higher self and how to remember. Getting in touch with the higher self is not at all difficult. What is difficult is remembering the experience the higher self talks to us. The, what is difficult is remembering the experience. The higher, self talk, the higher self talks to us all the time. Whenever there is a need for it, it's quite a simple thing for him or her to do. But here's the problem. Almost always when our first self communicates with us, we instinctively and automatically turn our consciousness inward. We put ourselves into a dreamy type of consciousness and the reason we do that is because we have a deep ingrained fear in God. All of us do. We got this fear in many different ways starting right from childhood. As young children, we naturally do not have this fear. Believe it or not, but all children are born completely fearless. That's big facts. All our fears come from the outside. We are taught by the older generations to be fearful as they too were taught. Their fear of God is the worst of all. In the West, it comes about primarily from religion. Many in the Christian influenced world know the same. No one can see the face of God and live. That's the greatest and most ingenious lie the devil ever came up with. 
the fact of the matter is that as children, we see the face of God whenever we want. He or she comes to us in many faces according to what we are comfortable with. As we grow older and are taught to fear God, we suppress the memories of these visitations. We really believe that if we see God's face, we'll shrivel up, we'll shrivel and die. So we bury the memories in any past and future visitations deep in our psyche. Mm. And we come back, we're going to follow back up on 322. Ooh. What thing getting juicy, ain't it? Mm. 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 Love y'all, man. Y'all stay tuned. Mm. Support goons, support squad. Love y'all, man. Y'all. Lames. Them lames. y'all lame keep doing what you do though yeah keep bringing that traffic my way our way yeah the film old way <laughs>